I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. The time is now 6 p.m. If you would please stand as Mr. Husband leads us in an invocation and Ms. C.J. Haynes leads us in the pledges. Bow in prayer with me, please. Our most gracious God, we humbly come before you tonight thanking you for all the many ways you have blessed this community and our school district. Thank you for bestowing upon this district all the many educators, staff members that are called to serve your children. And thank you for the wonder of education and how it can lift us all to new heights and capabilities. Help us all to use all that we learn to serve others and ultimately to serve you. At this joyful time of year, help us to be ever mindful that others are in need of your comfort and grace, and that still others are serving in roles around the world so that the remainder of us can be free have the blessing of liberty. Be with us as we do your business, the school district. Give us wisdom and discernment and help us to seek you in all that we do and say. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please join me in honoring our country. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. And now our state. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Husbands. Thank you, Ms. Haynes. <clears throat> Item 2A is special district recognition 2013 UIL 5A state volleyball champions, national champions, Woodlands High School volleyball team, Dr. Stockton. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Greg Colson, principal of Woodlands High School. He'll, he's here to introduce our very special guests. Dr. Stockton, Mr. Sanders, members of the board, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight to recognize a very special group of young ladies for their outstanding accomplishment. Um, you know, everybody goes into a season with great expectations, uh, and only one team at the end of the year actually achieves those expectations. And this group of young ladies started the season. Uh, we know we were going to be pretty good, uh, and we wore that number one target on our back all season, and these ladies have withstood the pressure that comes with that every Tuesday and Friday. All state championships are special, but none are quite as special as a team state championship where you actually have to play Tuesday against an opponent and beat them, come back and beat somebody else on Friday, then repeat the process five more times. So these young ladies have really stood up to the, that test and represented our school, our school district, and our community in great fashion. Uh, great players don't happen without great coaches, and at this time I'd like to introduce the best volleyball coach in Texas and the United States, Leslie Madison. Thank you so much. I like that introduction. Um, I just wanted to thank um, Dr. Stockton and the board for having us here tonight and honoring our team. Um, you know, we feel so blessed to be a part of this amazing community, a part of this district. And uh, without the support of uh, those two things, you know, we wouldn't be as successful as we are. Uh, we have a wonderful principal. Um, we have wonderful parents. And, and lastly, we have wonderful kids. Uh, they strive to be excellent, not only in the classroom, but on the court as well. And I felt very privileged to be their coach this year and, and very blessed. Um, I'd also like to thank my assistant coach, Karen Lucas, who's here tonight and, um, and introduce you to these 12 wonderful young women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Like Mr. Colshin said, this year um, our team ended the season with 45 wins and no losses and, uh, you know, ended up winning the 5A state championship for the first time in the Woodland School history for volleyball and, uh, and the first time since 1993 that a team in Texas went undefeated. So we're very proud of them. I will start um, from the left. We have junior Julia Pash, senior Morgan Eason, senior Madison McDaniel, junior Kendall Cook, senior Maddie White, senior Morgan Lanier, junior Courtney Quinn, junior Rachel Reed, junior Cody Lee, senior Lexi Schnockenberg, senior Kelly Quinn, and senior Courtney Eckenrode. are so tall I'm so jealous <laughs> congratulations on your success I know you guys had to put in a lot of hours and a lot of hard work to get where you guys um, made it and we're very proud of you and on behalf of CISD's Board of Trustees I just want to put this plaque and say once again congratulations on your success <laughs> proud of that group of young ladies. All right, item 2B, special district recognition. Sergeant Jesse Benavides and <clears throat> Lieutenant Colonel Garrett Brickwalt. Active duty operation enduring freedom, Dr. Stockton. At this time, I'd like to ask Dr. Chris Hines come up and introduce our very special guests. <laughs> Good evening, President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. We um, just noted we're proud of the volleyball team. We're also, uh, we have two gentlemen tonight that are with us. We're also very proud of uh, and want to thank the board and Dr. Stockton for recognizing um, these two gentlemen uh, for their, their sacrifice uh, for our nation. As Mr. Husbands put it earlier, um, they, their service protects our freedom. And we are very fortunate tonight to recognize two Conroe Independent School District employees, Sergeant Jesse Benavides and Lieutenant Commander Garrett Rickwalt. Um, they, are, they have both recently served and called to active duty. And they're here with their families tonight. And as you, you can tell, when, when they serve, it's an impact on not just them, but their whole family serving. And uh, just to give you a little background, uh, Sergeant Benavides uh, is our Conroe Independent School District Assistant Natatorium Coordinator. He's been in the Army Reserve for 10 years and uh, recently returned from, uh, after being gone for a year, uh, he spent nine months of that year in Afghanistan uh, serving as a mechanic in the Army. He's also part of the Improvised Explosive Device Route Clearing Patrol while he was in Afghanistan. Uh,
to the board, Dr. Stockton, Dr. Hines. Thank you so much. It's an honor to work for the school district. Um, I'm pleased to have my family here, and without them, it was it would have been a rough deployment uh, without them. So um, my wife Mandy and uh, my two children, Anya and Jackson Ray. <laughs> Also with us is Lieutenant Commander Garrett Rickwald, who is a astronomy teacher at Conroe High School. He's also a graduate of Conroe High School. Um, after serving active duty in the Navy from 1999 to 2005, he came back to uh, Conroe and he is um, he's joined the state in the Navy Reserve and he served in various positions. And so he was uh, deployed in 2011 uh, serving in Africa for 10 months. He was assigned as the executive officer of the Joint Operations Center for the Combined Joint Task Force. <laughs> and their mission in Africa was a complex operation that was uh, aimed at preventing terrorism, planning and operations in the region from reaching our homeland, as well as counter piracy operations stationed uh, very close to the Red Sea where there's a lot of uh, boat traffic. And so we'd like to recognize uh, Lieutenant Commander Rick Wall. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, I won't need it. <laughs> I won't need it. Well, thank you all very much for uh, for your support and for uh, for this event tonight. Uh, a lot of uh, people I'd like to recognize. Uh, first, my my wife and daughters, uh, Robin and Gabrielle. And I saw them in here earlier, but also my mother-in-law and father-in-law. <laughs> Cayman, thank you. And uh, also, uh, my friends, Curtis Hall. Without their support and without the uh, the support of the school board, uh, we aren't able to do what we have to go and do with uh, often with uh, very short notice for And the ones who really deserve a lot of the credit are the ones who have to stay behind. Marine, uh, we're always kept pretty busy. And uh, we often don't think about, you know, it, but everybody's having to go back at home. What's coming on the news? Uh, or whether or not they're worrying if we're safe. They're, uh, they're the ones who really bear a lot of the burden and uh, are often uh, open. I uh, also like to thank uh, Sergeant Benavidez, my, my uh, brother in arm, brother in arms. Uh, just got to meet him this evening and uh, offer him a big thank you. I 
item 2C, Special District Recognition, Regina Kello, Dedication and Service to Conroe ISD. Dr. I'm pleased at this time to call up Eric Taylor, Assistant Director of Transportation, to introduce our recipient. <laughs> Good evening, uh, President Sanders, uh, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. Uh, thank you for allowing me to the honor of introducing Kilo. Regina Kilo has served as bus driver for Conroe ISD for eight years. This is her fifth year on the current route. On November 12, 2013, Mrs. Kilo responded quickly to the situation to ensure her students' safety. While picking up students on a regular route, she came upon a criminal activity. She realized the situation was not safe. She responded promptly and effectively. Ms. Kilo calmly loaded her students and, seeing other students waiting for a different bus, loaded them on her bus. With excellent driving skills, she reached the bus as far away from the activity as possible. Thanks to Ms. Kilo, for safety delivered to school that day. Ms. Kilo's bravery that day served as an inspiration and a reminder of the dedication required for all of us. Item 2D, Citizens Participation. Ms. Ferris, is anyone registered to address the board? The next 30 minutes have been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint policies that are designed secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. These policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, a person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policies can be found on the district's website. Those who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for their presentation. Delegations of five or more must appoint one representative to present their views to the board. Ms. Ferris, please call the first person who has signed up to address the board. Um, my name is not Janet. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have a complaint. Good. Um, President Sanders and Dr. Stockton, a fear coming to the state first time, Jerry Bruce, 
interim chair, interim college education. And we're here to thank you uh, for how much you so appreciate the relationship that we had on road at Sam means an awful lot to us that to have you have this wonderful uh, many of citizens in Montgomery County come to stand our graduates come back to Conroe and and we really appreciate that relationship. We have um, we developed some time ago a program called a mentoring orientation workshop to assist both of us in terms of uh, taking adequate our uh, students come in the district. And tonight we are here to honor uh, some of those persons who helped us develop that particular program. And I have a number of people uh, that I'd like to introduce, and they will help me make that presentation. Uh, Dr. Karen is the Associate of Undergraduate Studies at the College of uh, Janet Williams is the Director uh, of Educator Preparation Services at Sam. Dr. Brian Miller uh, is a former Director of Educator Preparation Services. It's current Associate of Fine Art as and Dr. Marilyn but Director of the Center for Assessment and Accreditation. And <laughs> now, you will get to meet Janet Williams, come up and make the presentation. <laughs> Or thank you for letting us come here and honor the educators that you have out at campus. These are our, our educators that have gone above and beyond the call of duty. What they uh, developed with us is outside the scope of their That's why we want to honor them. Um, I'm going to refer to it as now orientation workshop. Now, I want you to know that we want to Honor tonight, call them up in just a minute. But there, Ms. Becky Page, Susie Kame, Ms. Gretchen Cumber, Ms. Pastor, and Dr. What the um, educators did was take the raw material of how you guide student teachers to make it successful for everyone. And they took with their expertise and experience, their extra time and effort, and created um, a workshop, a day-long workshop, the best way to work with the classroom. They developed the materials, they guided the process, it grew and grew, it expanded to other districts, they trained people in the other districts, and it just became one of the best professional development uh, programs that we that we have at Sam Houston. Now, one of the reasons we're honoring them today, they're not going away. They're still in your schools doing good work, except for those that have retired. They're my idol, frankly, you know, is, is for most of us here. But um, it's the digital age, <laughs> right? And it is just near impossible to put out of the classroom. So we've gone to a digital format for our mentor orientation workshop. But we want to honor the work that they that they did. Like I said, they're outstanding educators. And they took this brand with it and developed it and made it really special. Um, I am just happy to be on the tail end of this. Dr. Brian Miller, is the former director of educator preparation services, really Sam Houston person that was a major part of the process. Joined me here and helped me um, honor these individuals. Um, Wanted to come. come on up, Dr. Miller. When I go to um, conferences, I say I'm from kind of look at me, and then I say, I'm the new Brian Miller. And they all go, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, uh, what I'd like to do is call them up. Uh, first of all, Mrs. Becky Page. <laughs> I 
I would hear if you don't mind. Now, where are you pressing now? East. Okay. Well, if there wasn't a principle to support the process, you know that it wouldn't have happened. And so we think a valuable part of the process. Um, retired, uh, payment, payment, I believe. <laughs> She was um, uh, one of the teachers, again, that was the expert and the one that, that helped make it possible to develop. Okay. Summary, she's currently a secretary. And uh, I actually got to go to the Malmark conference. And see the uh, professional way that she did everything, and uh, way that she could teach other teachers. This is Leah Tasca, a fourth grade teacher. Leah was. Leah was interested. In one of the that, that put all this together and made it as um, good as what I was I Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Sue Sprott is also retired. Again, she was <laughs> one of the original that um, started the program and Make it um, what it was. And I also want to thank and acknowledge Dr. Kathy Gibson. Again, the administrator has to support the process, and she made it important for, for all the principal and <laughs> And if you didn't know, her son just graduated from State University with the teaching certificate and was a student teacher in Conroe ISD and I believe is probably taught today. Yes, he did. There you go. I just want you all to know that we could not, um, without your partnership, without the extra work of all of these people, made this um, just thought a reality. So we have some great educators, as you know, but these deserve the recognition that we could have tonight. Thank you very much. Congratulations, good to see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're doing this. All right, we'll get them back here. Thank you. Outstanding at this particular meeting. Thank you all for allowing us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. As a uh, Sam Houston graduate with two degrees from Sam, I'm very proud of my university, and thank you for all you do for our, for our people. <laughs> Item three is our consent agenda. Is there anyone that has anything they'd like to remove? If not, we've had the agenda. Is there a motion to approve? No motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? And all opposed? Passes unanimously. If it is okay with the board, could we move item nine, human resources report up? The next item on the agenda is that okay? I guess. No uh, objection. Okay. 
Stay We're going to move item nine up, human resources, uh, 9A, naming of assistant superintendent for secondary education, Dr. Stock. Well, I have, to, I have to make a comment about our opening awards and recognition. I don't know anywhere in the country you'd see an opening to a board meeting like that with the people that we recognize tonight. So we're very blessed to, to live and work in this, in this community. Um, I'm honored tonight to recommend to you uh, the, uh, for the position of Assistant Superintendent for Secondary Education. Uh, the young man I'm introducing to you or recommending to you I've known for the entirety of his career, and I'm very proud of his work, and uh, he will do a great job in this position, and that's Dr. Curtis Knoll. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor? And of course it passes, Dr. Noll. Congratulations. <laughs> Dr. Stockton, President Sanders, the board. I'm excited and humbled to be here tonight to accept this position. Uh, it's, it's an honor and a privilege to work in a district that is led by a student-centered board that truly cares about campuses and our education. During my time in Conroe ISD, I've had the pleasure to work on five campuses in three years now, and I've enjoyed every opportunity. We are fortunate to have great students, parents, teachers, staff members, and administrators throughout our district, and I look forward to working with them all. I want to express my sincere thanks to the Conroe High School community for their support, uh, I understand that I would not be here in this position today if it were not for the hard work of many. I would also like to thank the CISD, CISD leadership that has given me opportunity to grow and to lead. Ms. Drummond, thank you for giving me my first opportunity to lead and mentoring me along the way. Dr. Hines, I thank you for allowing me to work closely with you and ask you questions and learn from your past experience. Dr. Stockton, most of all, I want to thank you for encouraging me to seek my administrative certification, pushing me to continue my education, and expecting the very best of me every day, you've made a significant impact on my career and life. I also want to recognize a group of people here tonight that have supported and sacrificed to get me to this point. My wife, Tanya, who is a kindergarten teacher at B.B. Rice. <laughs> My son, Travis, is an eighth grader at Pete. <laughs> My daughter, Kaylee, is actually performing her first band concert tonight at Cryer. So she was here, took a picture, and she's there now. So she couldn't be here. She, uh, she's definitely missing this event. We're, hopefully, we'll make it over there to catch a little bit of the band concert. Uh, and finally, my parents, Mike and Linda Knoll. My dad is subbed as an administrator on many of our campuses. My mom is an art facilitator uh, currently at Oak Ridge High School, so it's definitely a family affair. In Conroe ISD. Uh, I can't thank my parents enough for all they do to support us as a family uh, and what they have taught me about being a man, a father, and an educator. As I told the committee that interviewed me, I won the parent lottery, and for that I couldn't be more thankful. I thank you for this opportunity, and I look forward to serving our secondary campuses and all our principals to make sure that our students find success in junior high, high school, and beyond. Thank you. Go get them, Dr. No. <laughs> you guys need to get going. Don't arch, so, you. Yeah, yeah. You got a band concert you got to get a band concert to go I don't want your daughter after me. Yeah. <laughs> Item 4A, Administration, <laughs> Adoption of Recommended Attendance Zone for Conroe Elementary School. Okay, at this time I'll invite Dr. Hines up to bring this item to you for your approval tonight. You know, I, I just got to stop the 
This looks really nice compared to Flex 14 and Flex 16. <laughs> okay, all right. You can go on. <laughs> we did we did trade that out from last last month. Um, thank you, President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. As Mr. Husbands just alluded to, uh, I was here last month presenting the uh, overview, and, uh, and that's when we did get names for our two new elementaries, and we're excited about that. And tonight, I'd like to bring forward the uh, recommendation for your approval from our committee. <clears throat> Again, this was just the uh, picture. This would be uh, the relationship of a rendering of uh, Patterson Elementary just to the south of Bosman. And this would be Stewart Elementary, which will be a K-6. Just to kind of hit a few of the highlights, Patterson Elementary um, and Stewart Elementary, both are going to open in August. Um, Patterson is located at 670 Beach Airport Road next to Bosman, and it's going to serve grades kindergarten through fourth grade. Stewart is located at 680 Fish Creek Thoroughfare and will open as a K-6 campus. Principals will be named later this year. And uh, we always get the question, but when we open a new school, if parents uh, can get the transportation worked out, it allows students that are in their final grade uh, to transfer and stay at their uh, current campus. As is our process, when we're going to open new schools, we form a committee that looks at the campus uh, current boundaries and tries to, uh, to look at how we can draw it to make it work. And uh, we have several of our members here this evening. I know Dr. Uh, Gibson's here. Um, I did see Daniel Lopez, Principal Armstrong is here with us this evening. Uh, I saw Becky Page here, and uh, we, I saw Mike Marsh, Principal at Houston, is here this evening. Um, let's see. Next. I saw Carrie, Carrie Fitzpatrick is here this evening, also on our board. Um, and uh, Dr. Stewart, and I don't know if Eric, Dr. Stewart's here, she was on our committee, and Eric Taylor from Transportation was on our committee, I don't know if Eric's still here, um, but we had several people and parents on our committee and several members, so if I missed anybody, all of our members stand up. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. <laughs> they get pulled into a lot of meetings, so we thank them for their service. Uh, the group met, um, developed several scenarios, and we select, selected some options to present at two rounds of forums. We had a total of 17 forums in all. We had uh, 115 patrons attend those 17 forums. We also had the scenarios up on the district website. Uh, we received several comments. And tonight we bring you our recommendation, uh, which is scenario 16A uh, for the elementary and 16A for the intermediate and I'll pop those up one more time on the document camera. This is a this is a look at uh, the elementary zones, and of course the green area highlights what will be the attended zone uh, for Patterson, and the pink area highlights what will be the attended zone for Stewart. And again, we adjusted a little bit um, arms uh, with Austin. Lost the uh, area. I'm going to fill a photo in. These areas came from Austin Elementary. These areas came from Runyon Elementary. This area came from Reeves Elementary. Uh, and the rest is from Anderson to form the boundaries of our new uh, Patterson Elementary. Um, Anderson, which lost the, which had the biggest impact receive these areas from Reeves <laughs> and this one area from Houston Elementary, uh, which is really very close to Anderson. Uh, in addition, we moved a section from Armstrong up to Houston. Um, then Rice, of course, loses this area, and Giesinger loses uh, this area. The intermediate impact, um, really the, the, the only changes were what uh, we moved from E. Singer and Rice that will go to, uh, that previously would went to Cryer, will go to the new uh, Stewart Elementary. And then D14, which previously went to uh, Reeves, since we were going to move it to uh, Patterson Elementary, it just made sense to zone them to Bosman. So that would be another 
change in the intermediate. That's our recommendation. I move the adoption. Second. <coughs> Motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Those in favor? Opposed. I, I'd just like to thank you again for all your hard work. Uh, I, I know, uh, you know, anytime there's change, there's, there's friction, but uh, you handled it as always. Uh, uh, I think it speaks everybody. We can, and I've talked to several <coughs> parents, and, and they, they might not have gotten their way, but they, they understand. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> And the rest of you as well. Item 4B, bond referendum update. Dr. Easy Foster, if you'll come and show us how those schools are looking. Coming along. Make Dr. Stewart proud out there. <laughs> All right, President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, proud to present tonight our bond referendum update for projects currently under construction. Starting with Flex School number 14. Because all of my plans still say flex school number 14, but this is now known as Charlie L. Patterson Elementary School. This project is on schedule. It is uh, scheduled to be complete uh, in the spring of this next year. It's approximately 80% complete now. As you can see from this picture, the front door is beginning to come together, uh, as well as as we work your way around the building, the, uh, the exterior of the building is becoming more and more finished uh, from the grounds perspective, pavings in, curbs and, and the sidewalks outside in the parking lot or what, or what come next outside. Interior of the building is in its finishing stages, so you can see the colors, the, the casework, the cabinetry, the, uh, the things that we need to conduct and store and do our business inside the building are coming together. The next stages in this is the cleanup and preparation of the floor surfaces, uh, the soft surfaces, which we're going to try to hold off uh, a little bit as we get closer to the 100% complete stage. At Flex School number 16, which is now uh, Gene E. Stewart Elementary School, again, it's in a very similar state of completion. It is uh, right at 80% complete as well. They are as well working on their front entry. Uh, the paving, things of that nature around the building are uh, nearing completion. Uh, interior of the building, the finishes are beginning to come together as well. You can see the, uh, the stage of completion is just trailing uh, the other uh, campus by just a very small amount at this point. It is on schedule as well. It is scheduled to turn over to our, as for our possession in the springtime, and both schools will open to student populations in our August of 2015. That, that is our uh, contractually, the contractors should be finished and turn over us a substantially complete building at the end of March. So we'll have it 100% under our control in, in April. That's all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Easy. <clears throat> All right, item 5A, financial reports. Dr. Stock. Mr. Rice, if you'll come present the reports, please. Motion we give Mr. Rice a pass tonight. Second. <laughs> Mr. Rice, if you'll sit down, please. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Darren. We all have the reports. We, we have seen the reports. We have so those. We're not yes, we have looked through them, and we appreciate all of your hard work. Not in vain, brother. We, we got yeah. you. <clears throat> all right. Item six, legal board of trustees end of year continuing education announcement. In accordance with Chapter 61 of the Texas Administrative Code, I am pleased to announce that all members of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees have completed and or exceeded the state continuing education requirements for school board members. Didn't say you passed. Item seven, executive session. <clears throat> Consider the appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, or dismissal of the public officer employee or to hear complaints. The charges against the public officer employee, including but not limited to the superintendent evaluation, assistant superintendent secondary education. Closed session of the board will now be held on the matters contained in the notice for this meeting as authorized by section 551.074 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. 
Should the board determine that any final action, final decision, or final vote be required with regard to any matter considered in such closed or executive meeting or session, then such final action, final decision, or final vote shall be either at A, this public meeting upon the reconvening of this public meeting, or B, at a subsequent public meeting of the board upon notice thereof, as the board shall determine. Closed session of the board will now be held. It is 6.45 p.m. We are adjourned. We are. I move we adjourn. There was no business done. 8 10, no. We have motion to adjournment. Second, all in favor, leave. All, all that want to stay, stay. Y'all have a very Merry Christmas.